And hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm Rick Zanotti. And I'm Harold Muliati. And today we've got with us Ronaldo Lawrence. If you haven't heard his name in the voiceover field, eh, don't fret. He's been in this field for a long time. Ronaldo's got a very varied career. He was a professional basketball player. He's been a trainer. He's been uh, an educator for decades. He's Adobe certified as, as an instructor. He knows a lot of their products. And we were just talking pre-show about Premiere as one of his favorites. He's done all sorts of stuff. He's written books. He's done audio books where he's actually read them. Uh, explainer videos, you name it. Ronaldo's done it. But more than anything else, I, I love the guy for being one of the best friends you could have. Here he is. Well, he'll be here in a second. Let's do our intro. Welcome to Sounding Great, a podcast dedicated to you. Your voice, your recordings, your audio. How you present yourself and how people perceive you. Sounding Great, because you can. Ronaldo, in that center position of power. How are you doing today? I'm extremely well. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Always, always a pleasure. And yeah, we were talking pre-show. We've known each other over a decade already. And, um, oh, wow. and, and we met from social media, from Twitter. Yes. But I think with me, uh, the best times um, for me is when, I've been, when I was doing the lynda.com authoring yeah. stuff and I was able to drive up and have dinner with you guys, you know, yeah. sit in a restaurant and just talk for that long was periods of time. That, that was, was fun. very much fun. And in fact, yeah. uh, for those who don't know, we're very close to the lynda.com offices. Well, actually, now it's LinkedIn Learning, uh, yeah. which is, I think they're in Carpinteria and Santa Barbara and maybe yeah. even a little bit in Ventura. And we're in Camarillo, yeah. which is pretty close to all that, about 10, 15 minutes away. But uh, yeah, it, has, it was great seeing you in person and, and getting to hug mm -hmm. you and just you know, mm -hmm. chatting. And he, he's done interviews live with us in studio, I think a couple of times and um, always fun, always fun to get together. And, and you know, I, I didn't talk about this in, in the intro, but Ronaldo's children got a son who's also a pro basketball player playing in Italy. Uh, he's got a daughter mm -hmm. who works for Vogue magazine uh, and these she's in charge of their social media and or for business and mm -hmm. uh you know he's got a great wife and he's just done mm -hmm. a, a good job with his life that's all i can say and um and and you've been involved with voiceover for quite a while you've always been doing videos and and you did audiobooks you did your own audiobook yeah i um i just decided that you know when you write a story um, there's nobody I think the best can tell your story but you like you can so I just decided that um, you know what the heck let me do it myself and so I did and um, you know it was an experience and, and one of the things that I think that I learned from it was it is hard work it is hard work trying to keep the tonality inflection you know inflection mm -hmm. everything that you're talking about at the right pace throughout the book it is really hard work but it's, it's so worth it it is so worth it yeah and it's actually it's actually fun but you're right when when you're first oh, doing fun. it there's those those little details that you've got to keep yeah. in mind and you go how am i going to do this and how do i uh oh uh, wait i'm a little tired today what am i going to do i yes. feel like i'm slowing down gotta rev it a bit it's yes. it's uh and but, it's when that pace drops and you need to bring it back up your your enthusiasm level you know that that's but it's like you say it's extremely enjoyable um and i thoroughly enjoyed it and i'm looking to do a lot of other work um, oh, I imagine. And if, and if I recall correctly, you dedicated that book to your mom. Yes, I did. Um, yeah. And yeah. I have no better role model in my life. Um, yeah. And the book has chapters about her life. And, you know, one of the things I wanted to do, Rick, was I wanted to, I think that anybody who's living, if you've lived any period of time, you deserve to tell your story. Because mm -hmm. even if your story helps one person, it's important. Um, and so I felt my, if my life was worth living, my life story was worth telling. Yeah. You know, so, and I'm in the middle of writing my second one now. So, oh, good. A any mm -hmm. hint on what it's about? Yeah, it's about inspiration. Um, and it's about being able to get up every day and believe in yourself. And, you know, before you even, your feet even touch the ground, it's just believing that you're worth the day that you're going to go into. You know, and, and one of the things I've been doing for 10 years now is that 
I've been lucky enough to, you know, that previous day, anything that I've done that I felt was worthwhile, I would write it down. And then so when I got up the next morning, it's the first thing that I read. So I start my mm. day off on a hop instead of negativity, you know, yeah. so. That's good. Um, yeah. You know, so. Well, you know, and uh, speaking of your, your uh, book, one of the things that you uh, talk about, one of the important points in your um, I Am More Than What You See and also in your motivational speaking and so on, you, you talk about the importance of self-talk and having having good self-talk a lot. Well, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, what? what why is self-talk important, and how how can you do better at it? Yeah, that's a very good question. So, you know, when you get up in the morning, if you're not careful, or throughout your day, your mind will tell you things that maybe it's not the best thing that you need to listen to. And so, with me, I am constantly constantly reminding myself that I'm worth it, constantly reminding myself that I'm worth whatever I'm going to do. But I also think that it helps if you've got evidence to back it up. So the things that you do good, you know, the things that you're afraid to go into, uh, any avenue that you're afraid, you're, you're afraid to deal with, I think if you've done a little bit with it, that you then use that as supporting evidence and you use that self-talk to talk yourself up in how to do it. Um, but I think a lot of the issues that we have today is that a lot of people want to believe in themselves, but they've never done anything in that area or feel that they want to. And you've got to try, you know, you just got to jump into it and do it. Like for instance, I just recently did my first two weddings, uh, videographer, you know, and oh, interesting. I'm like, oh yeah. And before that, man, I was like, I can't do that. And I'm just like, you know, what the heck, if I don't do it now, I never will. So I did. And, and the, the footage has come out really well. And weddings are not easy. You know, and I tell you the most important part about a wedding, people talk about video, yeah. but the most important part about a wedding to me is the audio. Mm. Because if you have part of the video that doesn't look sp extremely spectacular, if you can hear what somebody is saying, it is even more important sometimes, you know, so yeah. the voices, the audio is really important. Yeah, but I've enjoyed it. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. So I think I'm going to start doing that more and more. And you know what's interesting when you when you go into event photography, event video, anything having to do with events, you you played pro ball. That's an event. You're in front mm -hmm. of people. You're moving. You've got to, and you don't have a second chance usually. You, you go. You start going. You go. You go. You don't have a chance to say, I wonder if I got a good shot on that last one. Whoa! There's another scene coming up. You just go, and. And, and that's part of the challenge and fun. You know, as you were talking, I was thinking, what is the one word that really screws up the whole human race more than anything else in this world? Racism. Racism. Interesting. Harold, what do you think the one word is? I, I think that, hmm, you know, that's an interesting question. <laughs> There's so uh, many... I'll, I'll tell you what it is. And, and racism would be part of that fear, mm -hmm. fear. Yeah. Cause if you Agreed. look at racism, it's nothing more than somebody fearing someone else for whatever Fearing. stupid reason it, right. it's that's right. And, and that's racism right. goes in every which direction too. Everybody hates everybody. It's like, hi, hi, hi. Um, you know, but it's fear. Anybody right. knew, you know, do you remember? Uh, well, I don't remember neither you. I mean, what we read about in history, when the Irish first came to, to the U.S., you know, they hated them. And when the Italians yeah. came, they hated them. Everybody yeah. knew who came was hated. And yeah, eventually they kind of but, melted or hit the wall or whatever they did. And, and they eventually sort of got along. I mean, but mm -hmm. it is interesting because it, it, it all comes down to fear. What are we afraid of? Like you mm -hmm. said in the morning, I mean, when yeah. you wake up, you know, if you don't yeah. have a good self-talk and self-image, what are we afraid of? What is it yeah. that causes us fear? Now, you've been a guy who, who, even if you've been afraid of something, you took it on. And yeah, when fear. you take something on, eventually you become less afraid of it. And, and eventually mm -hmm. you're not afraid at all. You start becoming confident in what you can do. Like you said, you did two weddings. Well, that's yes. two down. Third one's the charm. It, it's going to get even better. Um, that's right. And, and that's the beauty of it all. And not mm -hmm. to mention the fun you have trying something new. Trying yeah, something new. Trying something new. Um, and how you know, many people stop before they ever get to even trying? Well, they don't even, that's right. They don't even try. You know, what's interesting is about um, five years ago now, uh, my best friend passed away. Mm -hmm. And it was all of a sudden. And um, 
I just thought, what the hell am I scared to do anything about? What, yeah. what? <laughs> there is no fear. There is no fear. Yeah. So whatever I want to do, whatever I'm trying to do, I just do it. And if I screw up, I screw up. But the, the thing is just to try. That, yeah. That's the thing. But you're right. Fear is that word. Fear is that, that all encompassing word. And so many people, so many people are so talented yeah. and they scare themselves out of careers because they're so talented. They're too yeah. scared to enter into a particular field. You know? yeah. Well, and it, it makes me think of that, that saying, I guess it's a little bit of a cl cliche, but you know, people say hustle beats talent every time mm -hmm. you know you can have mm -hmm. talent but if you don't go out and do it and even if you don't have the talent you can just keep going out and doing it and then you'll get you'll get good at it okay? well, i'll give you an example like like what harold just said uh, i know a lot of business owners we're idiots i mean they're morons but mm -hmm. they're doing it and they're rich so what we're are they it. doing they have no idea that they're not good at it <laughs> <laughs> therefore they're not limited they just keep going and, and you go you know there's something to be said for that yeah, there really is. There really is. And I just, you know, I've always believed that. Um, and I and I tell you what, though, a lot of it, I think if you try to do the right thing in your life and if you try to put, you know, all your bolts in order, I think if you look at your situation and look at what you really want, and I think if you now it's so easy to do the research beforehand, yeah. you know, with Google, uh, with it Yahoo. Is, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to find out <laughs> what you want to do. Like I tell my kids in school, you know, you say you want to be a doctor. Do you know what it entails to be a doctor? They said, no. I said, well, use the internet. You know, yeah. there are courses on YouTube right now that you can learn free courses, free videos that you can learn about. And then you can decide whether you actually want to do that or not. You know, but most people just say, I want to do this. I want to do it and have no idea what it entails. And so they give up as soon as the first obstacle hits. You know, yeah. in the voiceover world, a lot of people are the same way. How many times mm -hmm. have you heard, hey, Ronaldo, you've got a good voice? Or mm -hmm. somebody says, oh, you sound great. And then a lot of people get that. Oh, you have a good voice. Oh, hey, you know what? You sound really good. And they go, oh, maybe I could do voiceover. And then they freak. Yeah. They panic. They get scared. Or the minute they get in front yeah. of the mic, it's like, hello, my name is John. And it's <laughs> like, wait, wait, you're, yeah. you're funny. Yeah. You're good. What are you doing? I, I'm trying yes. to be perfect. You can't be perfect. The more perfect you are, the more you screw up. So be yourself. Right. Be yourself. Don't mm -hmm. try to be anybody but who you are. And, and that's, the, that's the most magnificent thing about you, the individual, that you are yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that separates you from everybody else, that you are yeah. yourself. And yeah. that's the most unique thing about you, you know? So yeah, so 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 to me, it's just about trying stuff, and if you get it wrong, you get it wrong. But at least I've tried. You well, when know, you and I first met, I'm you <clears throat> you asked me to review some some voiceover audio for you, and I did, and I and I and I gave you honest feedback on it. Yeah, and and you know we talked about this on a previous show. I didn't say who it was, but it was you, and who I said I liked your voice in everything you did, but I thought your storytelling just I right. you know I went from not bad. It's okay. He sounds good. He's got nice, you know, nice pipes and he could do better with certain things. And then you went into story mode. And I was like, okay, now I'm riveted. Mm -hmm. Now I am sitting yep. there paying attention. You've got my hundred percent concentration, attention. I'm excited by what you're saying. And that mm -hmm. storytelling mm -hmm. at its best, that mm -hmm. if you can engage someone and bring them, you know, just bring them into that story. Wow you're living the story with that person and, and you could do that. And that's where I thought, man, he's got a talent. And I don't think you even knew you had that talent when we talked that first time. I said, man, this is beyond a talent. He, he can do this. Not that many people can do that. No, I did. Oh, and, and we have and uh, Stephen, it's... sorry, we have Stephen Burns in the LinkedIn uh, stream comments and he, he had uh, a minute or so ago said, amen. Yeah, well, thank you, Stephen. I appreciate it. Thank you. You know, um, I have been uh, fortunate enough to know who I am. I've been fortunate enough to do enough soul searching that I understand me, understand what I want, what I don't want. And I think the whole thing is being able to just say, okay, the heck with it. If I make a mistake, I make a mistake. But having the understanding that if I make a mistake, it's not the end of the world for me. There is always tomorrow. And I, and I think with me, that that's how I look at it. I don't look at it as, oh, my God, you know, this has happened, so what am I going to do now? I look at it like, okay, that's happened. 
chalk it up as experience. Let's move on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, don't wall- don't wallow in your misery. Like, yeah. You can't wallow yeah. in the misery. Well, and, and I, and I think the to- thing about making mistakes is, you know, we're all, we're all learning professionals and one of the important parts of life is learning. And uh, one of the best ways yeah. to learn is, well, not just making mistakes in and of itself, but making mistakes and observing and kn- knowing, you know, why you made that mistake, how you, how you can do it better next time. But I think, you know, when Rick was saying that he um, listened to some of the audio that I did, I think the interesting thing was that I could have looked at it two ways. I could have looked at it like, well, who does he think he is that he's telling me and I know what I want to do. But I am sensible enough to know that if I ask for advice, I need to listen to the advice regardless of what it does to me. I need to listen and I need to take that advice because sometimes, you know, advice is good. You know, and then and, sometimes you need to believe in yourself. You know, and and Sorry. when I did give you advice, there's one thing I was careful to do, and that's not say you can't do something. Yes, I just said you need to work yes. on this one thing. You know, work you on or work maybe on. pronunciation or something. You know, and and beyond that, I said I love your voice, and you know. Yeah. So, and the thing is, yeah, when you ask for advice, you're going to get good advice. You're going to get bad advice. You're going to get people who say, mm-hmm. "Oh, you can't do that." Oh, you! I would mm-hmm. never do that if I were you, and that would be stupid mm-hmm. because you know what? And, and if I had said that to you, that probably make you say, "Screw that! I'm going to do it no matter what," because yeah. that's how I get. If somebody tells me I can't do it, I want to do it more. It's like, no, 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 mm-hmm. no! I can do this. And and mm-hmm. how do you get there? And and that's the road. That's the path. And part of part of the whole getting there is the experience of getting there. And every time you do something, it gets a little better. Well, and, and it does, I think that also go, mm-hmm. I think that also goes along with what Ronaldo was saying near the be- beginning about how important it is to know what you are good at. Because when you know what you are good at, then you also know what you're not so good at. Yep. And you know, you, <clears throat> when people are giving you advice, when they're giving you critique, then you're not necessarily going to take the things you're already good at and just discard them. You're you're going to kind of put it into the whole context of. What, what is your skill set? What are, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Now, Ronaldo, what made you get interested in doing voiceover in the first place? Um, like you said before, a lot of people actually said to me, oh, you have a nice voice. You should do this. You should do that. Um, and so I just thought, okay. And then I thought, nah, nah. But then I started doing a lot of um, tutorial videos. Mm-hmm. And um, I just found that um, the videos that I did were quite effective in terms of people um, – learning from me and in terms of the style that I was using. Um, and so I decided that I wanted to do it. And, um, you know, it's a funny thing. I'm meeting a young lady tomorrow who's just starting her voiceover company. Oh, and, interesting. Um, we're gonna see, yeah, we're going to see when we do some work together um, with the voiceover thing. Because I know myself now that, as you said before, I need to be very careful with the pronunciation, the enunciation of words and finishing sentences off and finishing words off. Um, and that comes with practice and that comes with reading a lot of scripts. Right. Um, but I think that also comes with reading, trying out and failing. So you know what you've, you know, and I don't care about failing. I could care less about failing. That's my last worry. Uh, but what, and then once you've got it and you've done your first one, you know, it's cool after that, because then you know what you need to do and you know how to do what you need to do. So yeah, man, failure, you know, fear and failure. <sighs> Yeah. Nah. <clears throat> Life's too like short for that. Like, like Simba said, failure, ha, 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 ha. I laugh in the face of failure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, also, you're a, you're a teacher, and as a result, you use your yeah. voice every single day, yeah. six, seven, eight hours a day. Hey, I come in front of, on average, about 30, 60, 90, about almost 150 kids a day. Wow. So what? And so what am I scared of? Yep. <laughs> what yeah. And scared kids can be vicious. <laughs> so, yes. They can be. Uh, they Stephen can Burns be. Uh, left another comment in the uh, stream. Uh, by the way, says, Stephen Burns is a very talented guy. Yeah, we I haven't seen him in ages. I need to see him one of these days. He's a really good person. We've actually interviewed Stephen in the past, mm-hmm. and we can, we'll, we'll link that um, interview if you'd like to see it. But Stephen said, the more you practice your talents, the less worried you will be about other people's opinions. Yeah, and Stephen's a very gifted yeah. graphic artist yeah. and designer, and oh, he does all sorts of work. I know Stephen. I know Stephen. Oh, yeah. you know Stephen? I know Stephen. 
right? Yeah, Stephen, yes. Yeah, Stephen, Stephen is a dear friend of mine. Man. I love Stephen. Oh, I love yeah. it. That's great. Okay. Yeah, I love it. You know, I, I think that that thing of um, just trying, man, and just, you know, just saying the heck with what somebody else think. And I'll be honest with you, I could care less about what somebody think of me. If I'm not hurting anybody and I'm trying to do mm-hmm. as best as I can and I'm trying to help somebody else, you know, what you think about me doesn't matter to me. Um, yeah. Because guess what? I'm going to die one day. And so when I'm gone, <laughs> it doesn't matter, you know. But yeah. while I'm here, I'm going to do my damnness to do my best for everybody else and other people I come in contact with, my family and my life. You know? So, you know, I could care less what you think. If I'm honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? That's the only way you can live. I mean, that's the best way yeah. to live. And Stephen yeah. says... Yeah. Uh, Stephen says, I find that when you discover your passion, failure does not come to your thoughts. No, hey, you're too busy having a you good find, time. Yeah, but also I think when you find your passion, what might look like a failure, if you step away and step back in and look at it in a different way, you get a different perspective. And so you can create something entirely different from what you thought what might have been a failure. You know, so, yeah, I, you know, and one example is I was doing this video and I and I had different parts of the video. And the great thing that I did do was that I shot the video from a lot of different angles. And so I couldn't figure out something to save my life. And I stepped away from the problem and then looked back at the problem. And the solution was right in my face, but I was too involved with the problem mm-hmm. initially. And I think, you know, with life, a lot of us, you know, we get upset about certain things because we're too close to that issue. You know, you step away. You know, so you and can't then come see the forest. Yeah, you can't see the forest from the trees yeah. until you back off a little bit. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And I tell you what, the trees are beautiful, man. <laughs> they Once are. you split them up and yeah. you walk around them, they're nice. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is very true. And mm. so, so you've got your second book in the works. You're going to be talking to a voice yeah. company tomorrow, so that's really good. Yeah. So and 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 I can see you doing some great stuff in the voiceover realm you know, more and more as as you delve into that, and and you're also well rounded in terms of your video editing and you've been doing camera work now for a while and you're also a photographer, yes. you do that too. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I've I've sort of gone away from the photography thing and the video. Video just completely captured my attention. It's, it's video fun. just. <clears throat> can I tell you something? Yeah, man. I there's not a minute or an hour that goes by during my day that I don't think something about video, about shooting video, you know, and I have now, um, I have a Ninja five, which is the Mm -hmm. monitor that you can report on. Yep. We have, Um, have Oh, it is unbelievable. Um, and I've got a slider the other day and I've got all the equipment. So I've got the equipment and it's, you know, when you learn how to do something and I think it, it comes back to that thing that if, you know, if you just do it and stop worrying about doing it, Mm -hmm. Your life can be so much easier. Just do it. Just, just yeah. do it. You know, there's somebody out there right now that's just wondering about what if what can I be good at this? Well, I tell you what, you probably won't ever be good if you don't pick up the thing, stick and try. You probably won't ever, you know. So you gotta try. And to try. True. And okay. my thing is voice so I'm gonna try and I'm gonna do it, Rick. I'm gonna do it. Oh, I so. know you will. <laughs> I know mm. you will, because you've got the ability and then and like you said, the spirit to wanna do it. And mm, yes. uh, and it's fun. It's fun. You know, I tell people a lot of times, I've talked to a lot of voice talents throughout the years, some of them trying to get into it. And I would ask them, you know, what do you want to do? And they go, I want, I want to make a living at this. Okay. And I'm always honest with people. I'll, I'll tell them, you know, from my opinion, at least. And I'll say, okay, this is good. I talked to one guy. He had a very good voice, but he had no emotion. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, your voice sounds great. Now you need to let your voice not control you. You have to control your mm-hmm. voice. They'll get your emotions out of there. If you have no emotions, nobody's going to pay attention. If yeah. if you're just if it's flat, you have a beautiful voice, but it's flat. It's nobody's going to care. It's just going to go. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. that can be trained. You can work on that, yeah. and you can yeah. just let yourself yeah. come out. That's part of it's letting yourself come out. Yeah. And a lot of people, for example, they want to be voice actors. That's great, but you have to know a little bit about acting, or at least how to present and how mm-hmm. to uh, how to get what's in you out of you. How to work your voice. Yeah. How to work. You know, these are muscles. You know, how do you work the muscles? How do you, you know, do things with it? <laughs> it was funny because one day I was playing around with. I don't 
don't know how to talk like this. Well, maybe I do like how to talk. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. And so going up and down, up and down, that's actually a very good exercise yeah. for, the, for the voice. Right. You're working the vocal cords. Yeah. You're working the muscles. And the more you can do that, the more you can control how your voice works. Yeah. And now your voice is yeah. nothing more than a great instrument that you can do something with. You know, yeah. your voice doesn't yeah. control you. You control the voice. You know, Rick, I have coming up um, in September, I'm speaking at the uh, Adobe e-learning conference, ah, okay. um, the worldwide conference that we have. And then this Saturday, I'm speaking at another Premier Pro conference. And I think the thing with me is I've just thrown myself in the deep water, mm. you know, throw yourself in the deep water and swim. Don't try to swim, swim. Swear. And that's what I've done, you know. And so the alternative is that swear. good. Yeah. The alternative, you do nothing. You do nothing. That's and right. You drown. Yeah. But you drown in your own sorrow. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, and that's no, I can't do that. Can't do that. You know. So yeah. So and I use all of these things as a way of training my voice, as you said, speaking, um, yep. understanding how people learn, understanding what people want to hear, how people want to hear it, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so just do it, man. Yeah. Just do it. Yep. <clears throat> so, Ronaldo, what's next after your voiceover thing? What are, what are the things you do? You've got video going on. You, you're teaching. Um, you're a young man. you still got lots of years to go. Um, what, are you, what are you planning on next? Any, anything on your horizon that you're looking at? I think right now with me is mainly – uh, the video stuff with me, um, but also getting my second book done, um, but also trying to maybe come out of education for two days and only teach three days and do a lot of the other stuff mm. that I would like to do in terms of e-learning, in terms of, um, you know, the video stuff. But to me, the stuff that drives me right now is video because with, with COVID and what has happened, mm -hmm. I think people have really begun to understand now that video is it. Video is it. And, you know, even the most hardened critic of video, you, without video, we would have been in a lot of trouble, mm -hmm. you know, without the ability to record video during COVID. So I think that that's my main focus now, the video stuff and the voiceover stuff, of course. Yeah, yeah. I think it's my main focus. That's great. Mm -hmm. We, mm. And that reminds me, we were talking a, a little bit uh, about uh, a, a video topic just before we had started the show, well, actually, before I go into that, um, Stephen Burns said, uh, he said, got to love that deep water. And he, he had also said, uh, <laughs> I, I would love to come back on. So, yeah, well, well, we'd love to have you back on to one of our shows, uh, yeah. <laughs> Stephen. But before yeah. we started the yeah. show, we, you were talking about how uh, you were learning that a lot of people watch video without any of the audio. They're, they're not hearing the voice because mm. we were talking about subtitling. And that was something that was rather strange to me because actually myself, I usually, you know, I either watch the video with, with the sound or sometimes I'll just listen to videos because I'm drawing or something like that and uh, doing something else while I'm uh, experiencing a video. Yeah, but sometimes what happens is, that especially if you're on a train and let's say for instance that a lot, you know, people don't want to hear it. And if you don't have your headphones, a lot of people will just, um, and that's why accessibility is so important. A lot of people will just listen sorry not listen they will just look and read um the video mm -hmm. what's going on because a lot of times what i do is i consume especially if it's something to teach me something i consume it at least four or five times so therefore if i can read and then i can do then the next time i can play it and i i know exactly what i need to do um because i, I understand that i if i can read it i can do it but if i can hear it then i know exactly what that person was trying to teach me. So, and we have situations in schools where, um, where you have classes, um, you've got 30 kids in a class and you might have a situation where kids are doing different things. So in terms of differentiation, you know, you might have one student doing one task, another student doing another task, but all in the same environment. So therefore, if you, if a kid forgot to bring the headphones, if they can read what they need you, you know, what they, what you want them to do, then it's so much easier. You know, it is so much easier. Exactly. But I, I, I just I just really believe so all the videos that I'm trying to get out there now, I'm trying to make sure that I do the accessibility thing. Yeah. Um, and it's just good practice. You know, it's just good practice. Yep. Well, Ronaldo, with mm. that, we're going to wrap up the show. We look forward to having you on Thank another you. show very soon. And 
And mm-hmm. I definitely do look forward to where we can see each other again. It's a little hard right yes. now the way everything is, but and that and that too shall pass one day. So that hopefully, hopefully we see you soon, and and we wish you as always the best of everything because you you'll get it. I know you will. Thank you. So thank you, Harold. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Uh, thanks thank for the communication you. between you and I, and um, keep doing what you're doing and helping Rick out, man. You guys keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a great job and a good service for the world. Thanks. Thank you. And if you're watching the Thank show, you. please subscribe. Let us know what you think. And if you want to get a hold of Ronaldo, we'll put his information below for LinkedIn or whatever so that you can get a hold of him for whatever you might need, especially your good voice. Have a good one, everyone. Thank we you. will see you next week on Sounding Great. Thanks. Bye, everyone. And it's a wrap.